Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're talking about transforming absolute value and radical functions. So we're going to talk about each of these separately, absolute value first and then radical functions, but they're both very similar in terms of how we can transform them. So let's start with just the absolute value functions, okay? The parent function, what I mean by parent function is like the original base function that absolute value is based on is y equals the absolute value of x. So that's those two lines outside of x indicate that it is an absolute value. This is actually how the parent function would look if we were to graph it. I just did kind of a rough sketch, but it would be a v-shaped. I like absolute value functions because they're always really easy to identify. I think v for value. So it could be opening upward. It could be opening downward. It doesn't have to fall directly on the y-axis. Um, it could be over over here or over here. Very easy to identify V shape, okay? So when we look at how something could possibly translate within an absolute value function, this is really important to memorize right here. So we have our Y equals, okay? Now, remember our parent function is Y equals the absolute value of X. That's a very plain, um, basic function, right? Here, we've added kind of a lot of things, we've mixed a lot of things in here. Okay, we have the x that was originally there, but we also have this negative a outside, this minus h attached to the x, and then this plus k on the outside, the absolute value. So let's talk through what each of these things are because they each represent something that could be possibly happening. So this negative, if there is a negative there, now there won't always be, but if there is one there, that means that the function is flipped, okay? So this would be a regular non-flipped absolute value opening up. And when it's flipped, it would look like this, okay? It looks more like a mountain than a V, right? Okay, so if you see the negative there, that means it's going to be opening downwards in a mountain shape. Now, the A, it's not going to be an A, it would be a number um, within there, but whatever that number is, that's the vertical stretch or compression, okay? So if the A is larger than 1, then it's stretching. If A falls between 0 and 1, meaning it would be a decimal or fraction between 0 and 1, for example, 1 half, one-third, 0.75, three-fourths. Those would all be examples. So that's kind of what the A is. Uh, the H is our horizontal translation, and it's essentially our X value. Okay, so you'll notice down here I've got H comma K is the vertex. This is like our X, Y, and H is the X. Okay, this tells us how we're moving horizontally. Are we moving to the left or are we moving to the right? And what's interesting about this is you'll notice the formula has this negative in it. And so whatever H is will end up being the opposite. And that's a really weird thing um, to think about. But if this is minus H, we would think, okay, we're moving to the left because we're so used to thinking left would be the negative, but it's actually the opposite. If it's negative H, it's going to be moving to the right, okay? And if it's positive H, it's going to be moving to the left. It's just kind of one of those things that's it's the opposite of what you would think because of the presence of that negative there. Now, this K on the outside, um, notice that doesn't have a negative, it's a plus. So just whatever sign it is, if it's plus K, we're moving up, right? Because this is our vertical translations. It's our Y value, okay? So K is in the place of Y. So if it's positive, it's moving up. If it's negative, it's moving down. So these are all the different ways that we could transform that original parent function, okay? It's good to point out that here HK is the vertex, okay? The vertex meaning that most peaked point, okay? So here it would be our minimum, over here it would be our maximum. HK is the vertex. 
Now let's move over here to radical functions. So we'll be able to walk through this one a little quicker because it's very similar. The parent function of a radical would be y equals the square root of x. Okay, so just instead of the absolute value symbols, it's just the square root. It means totally different things, but very similar in how this transformation works. Um, so a radical would look something like this. Here's that parent function radical. It starts right at the zero and then moves out. It doesn't have to open upwards, right? It could go the opposite way and move down. Um, this little point could start at anywhere. Um, so that's kind of generically rough sketch what a radical could look like. So you'll notice a lot of similarities between this y equals negative a and then our x minus h and the plus k. Here we go. Negative a, this time we just have the square root of x minus h plus k. Okay. Um, so very similar, just the symbol that is different. And this parts work the same way. Okay, the negative over here also means negative means flipped. Okay, so this would be the parent, this would be the normal, this would be flipped. H is also gonna be our X value over here. It also moves the opposite of what you think. If it's negative, we're moving to the right, which I know feels weird. If it's positive, we're moving to the left. And then the K on the outside is just, is what it appears to be. If it's positive, we're moving up. If it's negative, we're moving down. So I think it's a little easier once we see some examples with some actual numbers in these places to really look at what's happening. So I've come up with three examples and I want us to, um, I've you know, found three examples and I'm wanting us to look at, write down what is happening. So for this one, f of x equals negative two times the absolute value of x plus one plus one, okay? Remembering that the parent function is just y equals absolute value of x, what has happened here based on that parent function? Okay, so first thing I notice, it's got a negative out front. So remember, negative means it's flipped, okay? So it would be something like this, okay? It's going to open down. So that's the first thing we want to write. It's flipped. Okay, next thing I want to look at, it's got this 2 out here. Remember, that's your A value. Okay, so um, if A is greater than 1, that is a vertical stretch. So we would, the way we would phrase that is a, it is stretched by 2. Okay, now what else can I pull out of here? Well, this is a plus one, and remember what I said about it's the opposite of what you think. So we think, oh, plus one to the right, but nope, plus one means we moved one to the left because of that negative in there. So we're gonna say we moved uh, left one. Right, and you could say you could say translate. Technically, if we want to be real specific, we'll say translated left one unit. We want to be specific, and then out here we've got this plus one. Remember, the plus means up, so we've translated left one unit up one unit. Okay, let's look at the next example. All right, so I've got y equals negative one times the square root of x minus two plus four. Okay, notice the plus four is on the outside of that radical. So that negative means it's flipped. So this time we're talking about the radical equation, but still works very similar. It is flipped. There's no number here. I've got a uh, negative two on the inside of this radical. Remember, negative means to the right when we're talking about absolute values and radicals. Translated right two units. And then what's going on out here? We moved up four. So right two units, up four units. Okay, let's look at this last one. y equals one half times the absolute value of x minus four minus two. 
Okay, I don't have a negative, which means it is not flipped. Now, I don't have to write not flipped, right? Because that's just, it originally is not flipped. So, it just is what it is. Okay, but it's got a one half out here. Remember, if A falls between zero and one, that's a compression. So, we're going to say, um, we're going to phrase that as compressed by one half. Okay, let's see what's going on on the inside here. Minus four, remember the opposite of what you would think, so we're gonna say right four. I should have said that it is translated right four units. I've developed some bad habits by shorthanding that. <laughs> and then um, on the outside, we've got the minus two, so that means minus on the outside means down. So down two units. Compressed by one half, translated right four units, down two units. Okay, you guys try this one. It says describe the transformation that happened below. So remember, um, this is a radical function. Your parent function was just f of x equals the square root of x. Give me a written description of what has happened here. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.